Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. We are here for episode 112. I wrote 112. It, I wrote right it exactly. down. I wrote it down. And uh, if you're new to this podcast, just joining in, my name's Jason. This is Ed. This is Nathan. We're on the teaching team here at Community Christian Church. And we're having conversations every week uh, to help you guys uh, think more Jesusly. Is that a word? About your world. I don't know if that's a word. I just made up a word. So 112, that's how many, that's 112 weeks we've been doing this? I guess. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. We've been doing this for more than two years. More than two years. Wow. We started right before the pandemic. Mm. Yes. Remember that? Yes. I I do remember life before the pandemic. The January, right before everything went nuts. Yep. And then we've had many iterations of this configuration. Of things that we were doing and where we were. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've Boring. done all kinds of stuff. But we sort of settled into this format for, for now. now. For in now. the Community yeah. Christian Lodge. Yeah, you know. <laughs> the nice log cabin that we yeah, stay in right. here at Community Christian. If you're watching this on YouTube, yeah, it looks like a log cabin in yeah. here. But nice comfy chairs nonetheless. I guess. So, and mine's still high. <laughs> Yours is high on the I'm throne. I'm still sitting over Ed. Yep, yeah, that's right. So, all right. Uh, we have a conversation that I have taken two questions from our, uh, from our audience and I've combined these questions because right. they are similar. Oh, yeah. They didn't sound similar when I first read them, but then I read them again. And I was like, no, no, I think this, I think this really does fit together in the same conversation. So, uh, I'm going to read them both. The first one's kind of long. Uh, it's kind of a, a they tell us a little bit of a story behind their question. So here's the first one. It says, I was recently at a conference where a couple of people gave some amazing stories of healings, one from partial blindness, one from cancer. While the stories were incredible, I felt like they communicated a dangerous message that if your faith is strong enough, you will be healed. I know from experience this isn't true, but I would love to hear what the CCC thoughts are on this. (laughs) And they are assuming we have those. But yes. And the question goes like this. What do you say for the people who do have faith but aren't healed? Do you feel like those people who share those stories of miraculous healing should preface it with the truth that it won't always happen here on earth, their healing? So that's the first question, and we'll talk about that. The second one, I think, comes along behind it, and they want to know, why should I ask people to pray for me or for something is, it more, is God more apt to heal someone based on how many people are praying for it? So they want to know what's the relationship between lots of people praying versus one person praying. Is that better or worse? Or how does that work? Does God heal more people when more people pray? And so I thought that would dovetail into our conversation about this whole idea about healing. So uh, let's go at the first one. Um, actually, I thought it might be important for us to just get right out in, in the beginning of this conversation, um, do we even believe that God heals people today? Because I think that's the, the starting point for this conversation. Yes. And we do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I, yeah. I, all right, we all said it. So I'm making sure. I do. So it, not just because we just believe it, because I would say all of us have seen it. Yeah, yeah. Seen yeah, that's happen. right. Seen that's it right. Um, so let's talk about the role that faith plays in healing. because I, I will say, I want to preface as well, okay, just yeah. to go back to the person who said the preface. So when I say that I have seen God heal, mm. I want to be really clear. I have never seen the kind of healing that it sounds like happened in the Bible where there was a person right. who said, mm. um, I've got a short hand. You know, Jesus heals a guy with a withered hand, and Jesus says, stretch out your hand, and the guy's hand's healed. Mm-hmm. I've not seen that. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I have seen some miraculous answers to prayer. Yes. And mm-hmm. in ways, you know, uh, you know, James says, call for the elders of the church, have them lay hands on you, and the effective prayer of a righteous person, mm-hmm. and you'll be healed. Yeah. I have seen that happen more than once, where there have been people who were in bad situation. And think of a woman who had terminal cancer that uh, asked for our elders to go pray. We laid our hands on her, prayed, and she lay, she lived eight, nine more years. Mm. Uh, now again, and the cancer was gone, the doctor said, after that. Okay. She died of something else. Okay. Uh, so I've seen, I have a couple of those, but I have never seen the mm. person 
saying something and something. I have not seen, I've seen people say those things happen. I have also been in conferences where people say those things. Mm -hmm. I've been in places where there are people doing healings and my skeptical mind has always been, well, you know, okay, so he had a tumor yeah. and you say he doesn't have a tumor. I don't know how to prove that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And to be fair, I, 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 I'm the same way, Ed, but I have seen uh, case studies Oh, on yeah. things oh, and, yeah. and medical evidence yeah. of yep, some me pretty too. miraculous healings. Um, I'll, I'll just say if you're interested in that, a really good book just recently came out uh, by a guy who's written some great books in the past. Lee Strobel just mm -hmm. wrote a book called The Case for Miracles, and it's a yep. very uh, very intriguing read about the, the current medical evidence that we have for miracles that are still taking place in the world like that. So if you're interested in that. Um, so, I also have friends that have been yep. in mission airy situations mm -hmm. where yes. the gospel is being taught for the first time yeah. and I trust them yep. because I've known them for a long time and they tell me stories that sound very yeah. biblical mm -hmm. in nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. So um, I think what the heart of this question the person is asking this first question is um, because their specific question was what do we say to people who have lots of faith and are praying for a healing or something else that they want God to do in their life. And at least up until this point, it has not happened. Or it looks, or the people who have prayed for healings, and like you said, the person who was healed from cancer, that just didn't happen. I mean, I, I can think of, oh, yeah. I can think of way more instances yeah, where too. people have prayed for their loved one and their loved one still died of cancer or whatever they were suffering from. And they were not, they did not receive a miraculous That's healing. Right. So, um, to get at your question, what do you say to people uh, with faith who aren't healed? Um, well, I, I think the most important thing that you, you do for a person like that, and I don't know if you're asking because you're in that situation, but if you are, um, the most important thing to do is to be present and to mourn with that person. Right. Um, I would start there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I think people who are in that experience right at that moment, they're not looking for an intellectual discussion about why God did or didn't do something. Uh, in those moments, what I have found is that that is not the number one right. issue on people's Never. minds at that point. It really is about um, finding comfort and, um, and going through that moment. But I get that there are times when this question is more than an emotional question. Yeah. So we need to talk about a little bit of the, the thing, because I think a lot of people get confused. Because there are some passages, we got to admit, that where Jesus goes into a place and there was faith there and he healed. And then there were some instances where he said, you know, in fact, I believe it's Mark. It says that Jesus was not able to do miracles right. there because of their lack of faith. And right. it seems like the scriptures may be trying to tie faith together with the appearance of miracles. Mm -hmm. And I think I think the person who asked the question doesn't see it that way, and they want us to kind of discuss that a little bit. So Yeah, you know, that passage, <laughs> that, that one pat, and I, I can't think of other passages yeah. that, that there is that passage about, and it's his hometown. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's his hometown that he goes to. And uh, I have often wondered if the reason there weren't any miracles done is because when you don't have faith in a person, so they mm. they didn't even ask for a miracle. Hmm. You know, maybe there were no miracles done because the precursor of asking someone to do a miracle is you have faith that they can do a miracle. Yes. You don't just walk up to a person in general and say, hey man, I need a miracle. Are you the one that's going or to do it? Or you're putting them to the test. That's right. That happened that's a right. lot. And that's Jesus right. didn't do miracles that's for right. people who weren't yeah, he, looking for Yeah, miracles. there's one time where he, you know, we just taught this, where yeah. he does feed 5,000 people. The next day, they come and walk. He said, we just need one more sign. He's like, come on now. That's right. You, if you didn't get it yesterday, one more ain't going to do it. Well, you know what's <laughs> interesting about that, Mark, because I just recently included that in a part of one of my sermons. And what's interesting about it, I thought this when I read it this time. I didn't have time to get into it, but... It says he goes to his hometown. They they start to question who he is. He says because of their lack of faith, he couldn't do any miracles. It said all he could do was heal some people. And I remember thinking, was <laughs> that, that is, not a miracle? It does like say what? That. Like it says he couldn't do any miracles. Only just healed some people. And I remember thinking, so even in that, yeah. as far as there may be more to this, he couldn't do miracles than mm -hmm. than this 
the correlation between faith and healing. Well, and I would want to know in Mark 2, and I uh, Mark as well, I haven't looked at it. Is Mark using the word sign like John is? <coughs> or, I mean, or is it is it a different Greek word that they have translated yeah, I didn't miracle? I look at the Greek on it. Because <coughs> Jesus doesn't do a lot of just compassionate he doesn't walk around just that we know of, right. just healing for healing's sake. Mm. Now, they, it seems to be very clear that most of, aside from the ones that you can look at, there are a couple like the, the uh, his widow of Nain, where he's going somewhere, and then he goes, oh, let me, let, I see this thing, he's moved with compassion, he goes over. But often when it refers to Jesus going into a town and healing, it's always accompanied with the preaching of the gospel, and that somehow those two things are tied together. Like you said, in the missionary context of the gospel's breaking out in a new place, this is proof of the power of the kingdom. Right. It's a different, there's different purposes that go into it. The only reason I brought it up was to say that even in that passage where it says he wasn't able to do miracles because of faith, he was still able to do healings. So the the, the correlation between my faith and Jesus' ability to heal may not be as clear as sometimes we think it is, even from just reading something. Yeah. And so I think it's hard to tell. If you ask me what role does faith play in healing, I would say I th I think that is a uh, I think it's the wrong paradigm in our brain for how any of this works. Like I don't even want to say it doesn't it doesn't play a role. I don't want to say that, but I think that's a wrong correlation. I recently was talking with a uh, third grade teacher who was saying that her most frustrating thing is teaching children about parts of speech, mm -hmm. like the idea that this word is a noun. She goes, how no matter how many times I tell them what a noun is and what a verb is they'll say tomato is a verb. And I'll say, how do you tomato something? And she goes, but it's because for third graders, you're introducing a new shelf in their brain that somehow words aren't just things I say. They fit into categories. And I think sometimes we approach Jesus when it comes to faith and healing, and we see the same thing everyone else does, and we put it on a shelf in our brain of faith equals healing, and I've got to bring those. Well, so I don't want to say faith doesn't play a role because clearly there's something, but what I want to say is I... It's not it, the only thing. Well, and that, well, and and that also, we're not the ones doing the healing. Exactly. That, that is clear from the scriptures. It whether even if uh, even like James and John or you know J, uh, John and Peter when they heal someone they constantly are pointing to this is the power of Jesus this is the power of the Spirit these things are happening God is doing this and so when I when you ask how do you say to somebody once I get past because you're 100 percent correct mm -hmm. once I get past if they continue to ask the example I use is the example of Jesus himself today which is the the kingdom and the spirit is like the wind. Mm -hmm. I know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. When I see it, I can point it and praise God for the healing that did happen. But when the wind doesn't blow in a direction, mm. that doesn't mean that God doesn't care about your suffering or that God's even looking going, nope, not enough faith. Mm -hmm. I don't know why yeah. the wind didn't blow in yeah, that well, direction. What we know for sure is faith played no part in Paul's healing because he didn't, sure. get, he didn't right. get healed. That's right. But nobody would look at Paul and say he didn't have right. faith. Yeah. So I I personally think, and I would never say this to the person who had faith and didn't get healed, unless they wanted to talk more about, you know, what's wrong with me or what's wrong with God. That's a whole different discussion. Faith is not a power. Mm -hmm. We right. just had a discussion about the nature of trust and belief. Faith is another one of those words. In our world, and people do this in the crazy, I find, my, and this is a crazy illustration, but people put faith in sports teams. And mm -hmm. I think if I watch right. every out of a baseball game or I believe really hard that somehow the fans in the stands, we somehow had a part in the outcome of the game. Right. That ain't true. Yes. <laughs> that, that just ain't true. Yes. They, they played games during the pandemic in empty stadiums and the outcomes were about the way you would have predicted if the stadium had been full. I mean, they're just about the same. We feel like we're doing something, but my belief in what I want to see happen is not what's causing the outcome. I'm not saying that God, that faith isn't required, that it's about me asking God. Mm -hmm. But when I ask God, I am asking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking for it. 
And he's he's ultimately the one that gets to decide on the healing. Yeah, and I agree with the question asker. Uh, there is a lot of damage done in our world mm -hmm. in some circles where there oh, are sure. Christians who would place blame on people because they, you know, they would say, well, if you had more faith, you know, and, and that I think is a dangerous message. Uh, you will never hear either of us, mm -hmm. any of us, uh, say that. Um, so I, yeah, I agree with you on that. And I do agree with your premise that I, I think it's important. I often do this whenever I pray uh, in a public setting and people ask me to pray for them. Uh, I never would guarantee that person, you know, that if you pray in faith, you're going to get this. That's right. Um, because I'm always, my knee is always bowed to the will of my father. Right. And so I come humbly and say, I'm giving you this. And in fact, I usually say this. And when we do prayer times in, in the evenings and the mornings, right. I, when I'll pray for someone, I'll say, we give this to you, God. We trust you with this. That's right. And part of trusting you with this means that I might not get what I'm wanting here. Right. But that's not why I brought it to you. Right. I, you know, it, I'm, I'm giving this to you as an act of trust. And I know that whatever comes next, I'm, I'm okay. The kingdom of God is still the kingdom of God. I'm still safe. Everything, and I heard somebody say it this way, you know, if God never did another miracle for me in my life, or if he never did any, the one that I needed most has been done. That's right. right. And so that's enough. That's sufficient for me to continue to bow my knee and trust him. So um, that's the posture I think we all have to take uh, when we ask God for anything. So that gets us to the second part or the second question. And I want to talk about before we run out of time a little bit. Um, a lot of people see that there are, or they think that there is, a, you know, this direct correlation between if I can get more people praying or praying in a certain way. Right. Um, and I think, to be honest, that's, that's a little bit of a misunderstanding of the nature of prayer. Yeah. We, I think, I feel like we wind up talking about this a lot around here, or at least I do. I think a lot of people have questions about prayer. Um, so yeah. why, why don't we talk a little bit more just to help people understand the relationship between my prayers, God's answers, what I'm praying really for. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to say we're not praying for God to do things. Oh, I, I no. think that's going yeah. too far. No. But no. I think there's more to prayer than that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think if you think of prayer as the way that I partner with God, and in fact, it's the primary way that I partner with God is through prayer. Doesn't mean I don't have action. Doesn't mean I don't do things. But that talking to God that is the way I partner with Him, it only makes sense I would include other people in that because God has brought me into a community. Mm -hmm. And there is part of what... Jesus says that when two or three of you agree yeah. on something in my name, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's that, I don't think prayer, as we said before, is like a power and that, you know, like mm -hmm. if you think in terms of like video games, I've got to get enough coins in the bank to get up to what it is. Right. I don't think that's what it is. But once again, there is, and this is just a paradigm shift. This is actually how the whole thing with the third grade teacher came up. We were talking, I said, I think so often we have the wrong categories for everything because we have a kingdomless theology. We have a me and God theology and not God and me and we're operating with the church in the kingdom and that that's really what Jesus is inviting me into. That God is wanting to partner with human beings and he wants us to partner together with him. And so the reason that we pray for one another, we ask to pray for one another, is not because we think we have more sway over God, mm. but because it's the same reason that God doesn't just send me, Nathan, into Coweta County to share the kingdom with people, but he sent the church into Coweta County, is that there is a power of us working together in, in any other terms. And prayer is also energy, like the energy of me pushing on this chair, that it is energy. Prayer is me giving energy to God. It's giving me giving effort that there is something that when we're working together, not that God is more swayed, but that we together are influencing one another and that God is influencing us and we're speaking. So I would never say that uh, the way it's written here is like do more people praying equal more healing. Because once again, that's some kind of formulaic. Mm -hmm. Well, and there, there is, and I, I don't know how to say this, I'm just, I, I've been sitting here trying to come up with the words. I don't read in the Bible as healing physical things as being a primary issue for God. Hmm. Correct. 
and it really feels very primary for us. Yeah. It feels super primary for us, but I don't see that as being, every, I mean, I've said this, everybody's going to die of the last thing they have. Yeah. Whatever sickness you have, whatever was going on in your body, it's, everybody dies. We're all, it's 100% except for a couple guys in the Bible. <laughs> you know, yeah. everybody else has checked out the same way. And it, it's, it's just not the primary focus of God's world, our physical healing in this life. And sometimes watching a person suffer with a physical challenge and yet their faith is not shaken. Mm -hmm. I mean... I have sometimes learned. even grows in the process well, that yeah. they le they lean on God, they trust God. There is something that happens in that process. I can think of a couple of times in my life where I have watched people who already were very, very faithful people. Sure. And then they went through some suffering that I didn't understand, and they never questioned. Right. I mean, they never questioned. It was a paradigm that caused me to look at God in a whole different way. And God used their problem to heal a part in me that I'm not sure would have been broken, I mean, ever fixed, mm. had, had God not, had God, had God just chosen to heal that situation in the way everybody talks about healing, they'd have gotten fixed and I'd have stayed broken. Right. And nobody would have been praying for my inside because I didn't even know I was broken until I saw that. Yeah. Until I saw it, it wasn't until that that I realized it was going on. But we have taken healing, and then we've taken faith, and we've elevated faith to a personal power, and healing as a personal right. Mm. Or like, some reward. It's, yeah. yeah, if I, I've got this power, and if I can get enough and get enough people, then I can get this thing that is the ultimate. This is the ultimate. Yeah. Mm. It's not, I just, so again, I... We are told we should ask other people to pray. Yes. I mean, that's, again, so why? That's enough. That's yeah, enough for enough. me. That's We're enough. told to share. And, you know, the one instance we have is because he says, you know, because, you know, your sins will be forgiven. Ultimately, we miss that part of it. He says, yeah. effectual for a prayer of a righteous man heals much because, and it and it's tied to sins being forgiven. Yeah. You know, confess your sins to one another mm -hmm. and they'll pray for you. Yeah. And I'm thinking, and well, they wanted to be healed. What do yeah. sins have to do with it? But mm -hmm. the one time we see Jesus have a guy get up off a mat, can't walk, he says, your sins are forgiven, the dude gets up and walks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I think when you get into... I'm not saying, by the way, that <laughs> problems physically no, are caused no. by sin. Some are. I mean, yeah. clearly, yeah. there are people suffering things physically that if they had lived the way God wanted them to, that wouldn't happen. Not all, not all. I'm not saying that. Please don't take that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that paradigm shift is, is part of it. And, you know, I've been wrestling lately with just this, you know, you get quotes in your head. Often they're from Dallas. We talk about Dallas Willard a lot. Yeah. And you just go, what does that mean? I've had this one in my head for a while now from a guy named Ronald Rollheiser. And he, he said that the measure of spiritual maturity in a person is how grateful they are. And, he, and I thought, and I've wrestled with that, and I can't really even say he's wrong. But, you know, there's a part of me that wants to go, well, it's love, and it's how loving. Hmm. And he said... That the he goes when you look at a person and he didn't just say spiritual maturity I added spiritual he just said maturity in a in a person because he was talking about how you age as a believer he said the people as the, as they get older whether it's for the prayers that didn't get answered or it's for the prayers that did get answered whether it's healing or whether it's even in my suffering a person who looks at everything in life as this is a gift from my father this is an opportunity for me to love, to grow, to be more like Jesus because Jesus suffered. Jesus went through all of this. And so I think sometimes in the midst of it, and I think everyone who's on the other side or, or, has, or has dealt with an illness or anything, any kind of problem in life that you've prayed for God to get rid of, you, most people, I would say the people I've seen with lots of faith, get to the other side and go, there was something I learned. Or there was something I experienced in that that I would not have experienced otherwise. And those are the people, when I look at it, I go, and they would even sometimes say, funny enough, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Or that situation that was worse. Now, none of us feel that in the moment. None of us feel it in But you look through it and you go, I learned something about God, or I learned something about my faith, or I learned something. And being able to get through something 
and to find a way to live with a heart of gratitude that, hey, God is still giving me good gifts. And this thing I would have never chosen, but there is still goodness, there is still grace. Everything that I have is grace because the other side of that, to not be grateful, is to say healing was owed to me and it didn't come. Mm-hmm. It is to be ungrateful. It is to say God didn't come through and I did something. And that is to say somehow there is a way for me to go through this life and I can wrap a rope around God and pull him to my side. Yep. And if he doesn't, that means he doesn't love me. Now, I'm not saying that's what this person asking this question is. Sure. But I know a lot of times we get ourselves into those kind of positions. And to choose to look at when I'm healed, that's something to be grateful for. When I'm not, there's still plenty that God is giving me that is a gift to be grateful for. And one thing I wanted to redirect before we uh, get done here today is the the question they ask is, why should I ask people uh, to pray for me? Uh, Is it because that's going to cause God to answer it more? And and I would say, you know, that is not the reason why you would ask someone. We've already stated, first of all, that we are told in Scripture to do that, and that's enough. Um, but on a more practical level, um, that what we are doing when we come together and pray as a, as a body of believers is we are becoming what God dreamed up for the church to be sure. in the first place. And we are, as you mentioned, Nathan, we are fully cooperating with God and with one, one another yeah. uh, to accomplish His will and His kingdom on this earth. And so um, I... I you know, it, if prayer was just about, well, all I got to do is ask God, so I don't need to ask anybody else to help me with that because so, it's just me and Him. Well, now you've missed something of what Jesus invited you into in the kingdom life. So, yes, ask people because when you do that, you are entering into community. Yes. And you are joining with other believers in sharing that burden. And who knows, that person that you share with and you allow to carry the burden with you might be part of the answer. Right, that's yeah. right. So don't miss that part either. Right. Does that well, make sense? Well, because there's so, an intense loneliness mm. that comes with and I, I've, I've, I've read and I've talked with some people who have had long-term, like chronic illnesses, illnesses mm-hmm. that cause kind of debilitating stuff as you go. It's not just a, it's not a thing in the moment. That there's a loneliness to that because it's not an acute need that everyone yeah. can kind of jump in on and let's do this thing. That I'm just suffering with this thing, mm-hmm. and, and often in just very small day to day ways, and then sometimes big ways. There's a loneliness, but when I ask people to pray for me, and I'll say even let's get past healing. When you're going through a difficult relational thing, or you're going mm-hmm. through something, and I, I talked about this. My wife and I were going through just a really tough relational thing with some people in our life. And the day that it happened, we were able to ask uh, some family to pray for us. We were we had a church meeting. We asked them to pray with us. And I felt it in that moment. It was a burden being taken off of mine because yep. I realized that person is going to keep praying for me. Yeah. And I don't have to. And sometimes that's enough. That yeah. almost any kind of thing like you talked about at the very beginning of kind of mourning with somebody through something, that being with this is sometimes what is most necessary. It's not even that I'm wanting this thing to be removed. It's There is a way that I share it with you. And like you said, that's what the church is supposed to be, that when we pray for one another, yeah. there is a real comfort that comes comes in that way. Yeah, And I think it's powerful. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to bring that out, because I, I wanted to make that clear to whoever asked this question, because it sounded, again, I, I have to assume a lot of things when you send questions in. So I don't mean to assume too much, but I, I try to read in, why is this person asking this question? And I was hoping, I hope that it's not because you are trying to have an excuse not to share those things with sure. with other believers and people in your life because I think you would miss out yes. on something very key to what God has in store for you if you did that. So I would strongly encourage you to continue to share those burdens with the people in your life who love you, who will pray for you. Share them with everyone that you can because I think more of that transparency, more of that vulnerability that we all participate in as the body of Christ makes the body stronger in the end. Well, in, in, in the way, not even that, that it somehow helps me, Mm-mm. there is a benefit. Like I'm talking about, I think about the particular instance, I always go back to of the person that went through so much. I knew they had great faith. The thing they went through, they could have kept hidden for a long right. time. Yes. I wouldn't have had the benefit of knowing how hard to be able to imagine, man, if I were going through for that, that'd be terrible. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
they could have just kept it secret. Their faith was never shaken. Right. But I got benefit from the sharing, and yep. I got healed. We are a body, and we don't know how God's going to use it. Yeah. But we're told again, I can make the case that, you know, uh, and I used to, no need to pray because God knows what I need before I ask. True. Right. But I'm commanded to pray. Yes. That's where I finally got to. I am commanded yes. to pray. I'm commanded to ask for the things, even though he does know. I'm commanded to share my request with the body, to mm -hmm. pray with each other, mm -hmm. to confess my sins to each other and pray for each other. I'm commanded to do that. Yeah. That's If I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, that's enough. Yeah, It's just enough. So um, as we wrap this up today, um, and I don't want to get into a whole other thing, but I'll just, yeah, can I just say this? Um, I think this discussion that we just had um, has revealed something to me. Uh, there's a thing that I'm going through that I haven't shared very much with people. And it just hit me as you were saying that and we had this conversation. Maybe I need to do some, some of that work. So these kind of conversations are, are helpful to me as well as hopefully helping you guys. I had the same thought, honestly, Jason, while I was sitting here, Nathan was talking about the loneliness. And I thought to myself, you know, there's not only a loneliness of when I'm suffering, there's a loneliness that pride brings. Yep. Yeah. That when I have, I don't need to share this. Mm -hmm. Yep. But then at times I go, well, I wonder why nobody cares for me like they care for those people. Yeah. Well, yeah. because I didn't, I didn't yeah. share anything. That's right. That's I, right. And there's just this loneliness that comes, mm -hmm. and there's no benefit anybody gets. Mm -hmm. This is just a me thing. I am not benefiting, and I had the same thought. I thought I should be way yeah. more open with people than I am. Right. I'm pretty open, but I'm not always open about the things that show me as weak. Weak. I was going to say, I, I, I grew up, I've said this before in public places, but I grew up in a family situation where it was not okay to, to express uh, vulnerability and weakness. And so that has been with me for my entire life. And it just in the last, I'd say, decade, God has been chipping that away from me and revealing it in some ways that I didn't even know was there. Didn't even see it, blind spot kind of stuff in my life. And so um, it's a progress. It's a process, I should say, mm -hmm. that I'm in. So, uh, so whoever asked these questions, thank you for sending those. Absolutely. They were helpful to us. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully this conversation was helpful to you. So uh, that's it. I hope that was helpful. And if you have follow-ups, want to talk more about that, or you just have something else to ask us, don't always try to remind you of uh, the link is in the description on our YouTube video, or if you're watching or listening on a podcast app, uh, the link to a, a form is right there in the description. You can click that, send us questions, and we will continue having these conversations. So, you could be episode 113. 113, because I, <laughs> I, I, we do have a few questions uh, sitting in the hopper. One, 122. We'll you see. Could be 120 we don't know. <laughs> but put it in there, and we will get to it. It may take us a few weeks, because we do have some stacked up, but you ask it, we'll, we'll work it into the conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.